region. Dr. Khalid, the mic is yours. Good luck. Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to thank you for this invitation. I hope you can see the slides. Yeah, we do. Okay, so uh, my talk uh, or the assigned talk to me is regional challenges in uh, cystic fibrosis uh, care. And so, so, you know, my work in Saudi Arabia, so I'm going to concentrate on Saudi Arabia. I can divide those challenges into two. One is diagnostic and the other is therapeutic. So uh, let us start with the, with the case as an example. This patient came to us in November two, uh, 2017. His name is Hatem. He was at that time 12 months old boy, delivered by cesarean section, no problem initially, but he had three times admissions for pneumonia, two months, 10 months, and uh, last week before he presented to us. He had several investigation, CT scan, brain, echo, CT chest, received so many nebulizers, IV therapies. And when he arrived to us, he was severely distressed. Actually, he was immediately intubated. In the ER, he was underweight, and he has electrolyte compatible with pseudoparter. His ET culture revealed pseudomonas aeruginosa. So this child, this is his growth chart. You can see that his weight is below uh, normal, far below normal. His X-ray actually showed severe inflammation, inflation, hyperinflation. You can see the heart is just swimming in the middle of the lungs. You see, I've never actually seen such severe uh, hyperinflation like this, indicating a lot of disease in these uh, small uh, airways. Uh, you know, this child was very clear cystic fibrosis case from presentation, even without sweat chloride, but unfortunately he was missed for a year. And this paper showed that if you are making the diagnosis more than a few weeks uh, of life, or two months of life, you are already too late for, uh, ex uh, for optimal outcome. So early diagnosis and inter intervention are the key of success uh, in cystic fibrosis care. This uh, figure is coming from a paper published by Dr. Hannah Benja recently. Uh, showing that the median age of diagnosis was 10 months, 0.2. The range is from 4.4 to 4 uh, months to 5.7 years. This is the median age of uh, diagnosis and by the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, 2019, 2018, the median age was three months versus 10 months uh, in, in, in our uh, case here. But this is even a single center experience. I mean, I'm sure that the age will be even higher than what's shown in this paper. Now, why diagnosis delayed? Uh, we have problem with clinical knowledge. We have problem with access to sweat chloride, and we don't have neonatal uh, uh, newborn screening for cystic fibrosis. Why uh, people have uh, clinical knowledge? Actually, uh, a lot of people still remember, think that CF does not exist in, so in, in our uh, population. And it's regarded uh, that, you know, they don't usually regard in their differential diagnosis. This paper is by, from, from a primary care journal by Dr. Asiri, uh, which uh, he reviewed the knowledge. This is published actually this year. Uh, he reviewed the knowledge of primary care physician about cystic fibrosis. And you can see, for example, mode of inheritance, one third of the primary care get it wrong. If you see the typical symptoms of cystic fibrosis, you can see that you know none of them actually get full response. Uh, diagnostic tools, uh, only two thirds knows the, you know, know the diagnostic tool, tool for CF. So we have big gap, and I think this conference is probably uh, one way to sell, uh, to solve this uh, issue. And the second problem is sweet chloride. We have two problems with sweet chloride. One is access, and the other is quality. Uh, as far as I know, probably we can access sweet chloride in few regions of Saudi Arabia, probably in the Western Central. Uh, we don't have... Uh, uh, you know, I saw a figure from England, actually 180 uh, sweet chloride uh, center you can do. Here we have only a few centers. Uh, recently, I came across only two centers, for example, in Jeddah, who can do sweet chloride tests. Uh, the second problem is standardization of the sweet tests. Uh, 
we know that even we have few centers, a lot of them do, 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 do the test by conductivity. And the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation is saying it's not appropriate to perform switch test using conductivity. Uh, and this uh, clinical laboratory standard institute guidelines and which standards uh, only accept con conductivity as screening test rather than diagnostic test. This is the typical test where you do stimulation, collection, and then you analyze the results. As you know, that's with chloride, you know, the, if you are pop 60, then it is positive. If the patient is in this range, 30 to 59, it is equivocal. equivocal. It is below 29, then it is negative. So, you know, just changing this figure a bit, it will be normal. Changing this figure a bit, it can be intermediate. So this is why we have to do the sweet chloride very accurately because the, you know, a few millimole differences can make a, a difference. You can see, you know, there are guidelines to do a proper uh, sweet chloride. USA, this is this publication is from 2009. It is 60 pages, UK 2014, 120 pages, all talking about how, stand, how to standardize this important test. So chloride is one of the, uh, uh, it is an old test now, it's probably, I guess it is more, probably 60 years old test, still remaining a good uh, or gold standard test for CF. So we need really to be more attention to this test. So we need to have internal quality control, external quality assessment and editing. Uh, which I'm not sure it's done properly. And the frequency of the test also affect the performance of uh, uh, quality. So centers who does very few tests, uh, they cannot maintain the quality because they can't assign staff just to do the test. Uh, it's waste of manpower. So unless you have a big flow of patients, you can really assign certain staff, train them. Uh, and then, uh, so it's, it's, I think if you're in a city, if you are doing so many centers doing test probably can reduce the centers to, 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 to fewer and make them more exposed to assure quality of this test. Uh, so Cystic Fibrosis Foundation Swiss test is, uh, stated that SWIT testing must be performed in a sufficient number of patients by a limited number of experienced, well-trained personnel who pass periodic competency testing. In our case, probably some laboratory, it is done uh, by who is, whoever is available uh, because the testing is not done frequently. Misdiagnosis of patient has been attributed to laboratories performing too few tests. Now what is sufficient numbers really subjective? The second problem, we don't have uh, newborn screening tests and you know, newborn screening test has several benefits and nutritional benefits. Um, uh, this is probably, uh, and it, it it's also can have probably some cognitive, it is supposed to be cognitive benefits. Uh, it has also some effect on pulmonary function test and even survivor. These are an example of how newborn test can affect, uh, in this case, the height. So those who are diagnosed uh, by newborn test compared with those who are caused uh, by, 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 by symptom, you can see uh, a positive effect on height. This is the weight, you know, those who have uh, were diagnosed by newborn in black bars uh, are less likely to be uh, underweight or, 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 or the high or stunted in growth. Uh, even hospitalization is less. There is also some uh, BFT benefits uh, on these patients who are diagnosed by newborn screen. Even actually, interestingly, pseudomonas uh, is less than those who are diagnosed by newborn, uh, newborn screening. If you compare symptom with newborn screening here, you can see a big difference in the uh, pseudomonas acquisition. acquisition. Uh, even the mucoid pseudomonas is much less than those who are diagnosed by newborn screening. So there are several benefits. Even survivor is, 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 is better. Uh, in uh, newborn screening than those who are diagnosed by, by symptoms. Now, what is the story in our country? As I said, I'm using uh, Saudi Arabia as, um, as my experience is only from Saudi Arabia and the region. Um, you know, our birth rate is declined significantly in the recent years to 17.3 uh, per 100 uh, per thousand population. So uh, this is where we stand. So we are, uh, you know, the, we have about this number. So we have about 590 or close to 600,000 uh, deliveries a year. 
If we believe that the uh, cystic fibrosis is one in 4,000 in Saudi, which we are not very sure about this figure, but this is probably, you know, around uh, mid middle uh, of the work expectation, we expect to have 150 new CF yearly. 10% will be in the, in the, in intermediate or indeterminate by the newborn screening test, probably going to be 15 cases more. So we'll have a total of 165 cases who need care yearly. And I believe no single center can take this burden. So we need a national program to take care of this problem. And it is a hope that if we have national center for uh, fibrosis uh, diagnosis and probably also follow up uh, and this uh, center, I guess the function could be, uh, this is just a suggestion. We expect them to do 300 to 400 sweat chloride tests just from newborn screening because, uh, you know, when you have positive newborn screening, you need to do two sweat chloride in these children. So this is the number expected. Uh, and you can do genetic testing in this center. You can start therapy and you can refer patient to available CF, CF centers. And you can follow up intermediate cases till they become clear in this center. Uh, if you need, of course, uh, uh, trained nurses, physicians, laboratory, genetic counselors, pharmacists in this center. This is a hope that will, may help to solve this challenge. Now I'm going to move to the second part of the talk, which is therapeutics. Uh, therapeutics, we have new uh, modulator, and the challenges we have are mutation-related and cost-related. You know, in the West, uh, uh, after they have this uh, triple uh, cofactor or, or uh, triple therapy, uh, the now 90% of their CF population have effective uh, modulator therapy. Unfortunately, this may not be true for our population because we have different uh, mutation. This is again from Dr. Anna Benjamin's recent uh, publication uh, showing the 10 uh, important mutations that we have in Saudi Arabia covering about 80%. And you can see we don't have a single mutation that's, that's really prominent. We have all, you know, this only the commonest is only 17%. And I think it also depends on region if you go north or so this uh, mutation are uh, you know distributed uh, uh, differently, but uh, we are unfortunate. We don't have you know one big mutation that uh, cover most of our population. So the mutation related challenges, uh, as I said, we don't have overwhelmingly common single mutation. Many are rare mutation. We don't know their class. So if we don't know the class, we cannot really decide about the modulator therapy if it is available for us. And these mutations are few, as you can see here, you know, some of the, these mutations are only seeing in you know, like this one, seven, eight, nine. So you cannot even conduct clinical trials to, um, you know, uh, study uh, medications or other things. So this is why now we have concept is called therotyping. Therotyping is a process where you match medication with mutation by testing a proof mutilator on the cell lab. So you don't need to test them in patient, you test them in cell lab. And for that you need cells and you also need biomarker. And this biomarker uh, is, 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 uh, is, is used to signal that the drug is working. In the world, there are about 650 rare mutations that may benefit from ferrotyping. Uh, you can get cells either from human bronchial epithelium, which is the gold standard, but sometimes difficult to get, uh, you know, human cells from the uh, CF uh, child or whatever. But you can take any CFTR, you know, containing cells or, or uh, like nasal or, or rectal, or even in the lab, uh, you can have fischer rad thyroid cell, which is used where you transfect the mutation into, into this, uh, this cell. And then you use biomarker, uh, and you can see uh, if the biomarker, uh, like chloride transport, see if it is affected in the lab. And this is an example uh, of a study done by Van Gore, published in 2014 in the uh, General of Cystic Fibrosis, uh, where he brought this FRT or the Fischer Rat uh, thyroid cells. And he transfected so many mutations. Uh, I think it's about more than 50 mutations. And uh, with that, it, the IVA factor uh, 
the drug was used to see if it is uh, what mutation will respond. And they use the chloride transport as a marker. And you can see that these mutations uh, responded where the chloride transport uh, uh, improved. And with that, actually, the FDA, just based on this study, approved IV factor for, uh, for, for, for uh, drugs, uh, for mutations that were not studied clinically, because few of them are available to be studied clinically. And this was the first time the FDA approved uh, the drug based on laboratory study. And you can see this, this uh, green uh, mutations approved by the factor without clinical study, just laboratory studies. And this is the approval of the FDA, the additional mutation, laboratory evidence used to support efficacy. Uh, this is another way, which is using rectal uh, organoids. Here, you, you know, you, you, if you add the drug, uh, if you add, if you add uh, a substance called fescaline, which is, I think, a herbal substance, the uh, CFTR containing cells must swell. This is the wild type, which is the normal cells. You can see they swell without medication. But those who are mutated CFTR, the swelling happen after you activate this, uh, this spike leads to the drug, which is Lumacaftor and Avacaftor. So in the lab, you can see if this who, what mutation respond by assessing a response to certain biomarker. The other way is to use uh, N of one type of clinical design trial. So, so in this design, you don't have so many patients, you use just a single patient. So we bring a single patient, you put the patient in drug and you measure markers that, for example, in CF probably may use uh, uh, spirometry, LCI, um, uh, and other, you know, like the questionnaire response. And the patient is blinded, and as well as the investigator, what drug or blast. The patient himself will have on and off, uh, you know, like 28 days, first of all, the screening period to do your measurements, and then you put the, the, the whatever. Uh, uh, is on and off and off and off and then you you can decide uh, on this so this one of one uh, type clinical trial is designed for those who have rare mutation uh, dr uh, george solomon from university of uh, alabama is conducting uh, rare mutation of cystic fibrosis overcoming barrier, barrier to personalized medicine so he's collecting those with rare mutations and they are studying them first in the laboratory uh, in vitro. And if there is clinical response, they will put them in, in uh, of one trial. So the patients will have on treatment. Of course, both investigator and the patient are blinded. And then you do, you know, on, off, on, off, on, off. And you do several measurements during different periods, like during the on and uh, the off to see uh, the response. So first you assess the response in vitro, then you do this uh, in uh, of one trial and a single patient, uh, uh, because this mutation you cannot you know, collect uh, many patients, single or four or five, whatever number you have. Now going, uh, the last ch uh, challenge we have is, uh, is, is really expensive, this therapy. You know, this therapy is expensive and then I don't think this is, a regional problem. I think the whole uh, it's a global problem. Uh, the cost of this medication, and we hope that a solution for this cost will come. But you know, uh, to decide and, 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 and starting based on the therapy, you, need, you, need, you really need a lot of uh, financial support. So I think I am done. Just concluded that uh, you know we have still a long way to go. We are. In, I think we are heading the right direction in, uh, in our region. We, you know, if you are working in cystic fibrosis, you know, like uh, 20 years back, there will be even, you know, cystic fibro medication like it can to get. But now I think we have more awareness among physicians, but still we have a lot to, to do. And, uh, you know, with the effort of the society and, uh, uh, cooperation with, with with other societies, we may uh, reach our goals in helping our patients. So thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Khaled. Really, um, I enjoyed very, very nice presentation. And uh, we have very good plenty of time, actually, 
before the next speaker, uh, which is supposed to be on uh, 3.30. So we do have um, very good time for discussion. Um, I think uh, I don't see any, any questions related to this subject, but what, what about uh, the National Registry, Dr. Khalid, as, as a uh, challenge? And do you think the, ch the, the registry is an, uh, a priority uh, among those challenges and barriers? Yeah, I, I guess, you know, this is a start. Uh, I think uh, uh, we need, yes, uh, we need registry, but I guess also uh, we need we need some, you know, something probably equivalent to the cystic fibrosis foundation in the region. We need, uh, you know, a body that, uh, you know, advocates and also do guidelines and also probably, you know, uh, supervise, uh, approve centers who are, who, are, who, are, who, are, who are fulfilling criteria for cystic fibrosis care. You know, if you uh, see in the United States that they have cystic fibrosis foundation in 1953, so it's older than me. Uh, so uh, uh, I think we need to start somehow. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think Professor... I, 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 Professor Khalid, if I may, thank you very much, Lakini, and it's an excellent talk, and you summed up the problems that we face in the region. You use Saudi Arabia, but you're absolutely, this could be translated all across the region. As somebody who's originally from the region, you touched on a raw nerve. I would, I love your suggestion of a national CF center, whereby you'd be the referral center. It's a hub and spoke. Um, in Ireland and the UK, that was initially the model that was used, uh, a major hub and then different spokes. You have to make sure that you have partners around you and they are, they are engaged and they buy into this because nobody wants all the patients to be in one place and deprive expertise elsewhere. So I think a hub and spoke is the key. I agree with you, the registry is a start and the registry is important. A foundation is a better thing, not only for, for organizing and guidance, but also for advocacy, to advocate for the patient, for political pressure, for all that. So I think you've touched on very important, um, very important topic uh, and well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and another point to Dr. Khalid also, which is the awareness issues. It seemed to be really a very a major contributing factor and delaying the, the, the diagnosis, especially in, in a country like Saudi Arabia, which is almost a, uh, a huge country where we usually depends on the periphery and the periphery, uh, peripheral cities uh, for referring cases. And as you have mentioned, um, the, the key point and uh, better outcome is the early detection of the disease and the early intervention. Unfortunately, some of the cases when, when it comes to the tertiary care centers, they are already late. They are already being struggled there in the periphery with, with you know, misdiagnosis or underdiagnosis or mislabeled as asthma, some of the cases. So do, do you think, or do you agree with me that probably the first step to increase the awareness of healthcare providers in the periphery to enroll them and to increase their level of awareness, and then they can refer to the tertiary care center. This is number one. And number two, the suggestion of uh, the national center, what about the other healthcare provider system in the country? And I'm sure in another nearby countries and uh, also the regional countries, they do have the same where they do have different healthcare systems or different healthcare providers, I guess. I think, uh, okay, we need to, uh, to, to, to uh, increase awareness among physicians, but also we need to empower them. You know, I believe if you go to, for example, uh, you know, like our patient who come from Abha, I am not aware in the region about any sweat chloride testing available in that region. Mm -hmm. So if the person suspects CF and he has no, uh, you know, quick access to sweat chloride, uh, then it would be really uh, difficult and the referral to tertiary care center will take time uh, and this, this is very precious time. You know, if you lose weeks without interventions, without, uh, uh, 
so uh, first of all i think uh, we need to uh, yes we need to uh, increase the awareness but also we need to think about spreading the tests or for also quality of the test you know i'm sure that even the tests we have are conductance a lot of them i'm not sure about how many are done uh, quantitative so uh, and uh, you know knowing some of the hospitals also the personnel who are who are doing the test keep changing uh, no fixed so even we have few number of sweat chlorides still uh, we don't have uh, with the quality still is an issue i guess so uh, yes i think it's it's, it's a, a big problem i think it needs to be tackled in many ways awareness uh, facilities etc Uh, and also, we need to know about the, the mutations in our uh, in our uh, country, as well as the exact prevalence of the disease, which uh, which again it needs um, a national collaborative work. To uh, to uh, to yes, uh, so registry will registry will help on that. I guess uh, knowing more information about the patient, knowing uh, we we do have, I think, a clear. Uh, you know, uh, idea about the mutations, but we need to work more in doing some cell studies or, or, or some, uh, you know, some form of research to further characterize these mutations. Dr. Khali, the question that might, sorry to cut across, that might be pertinent to you, any national effort to study if our mutations might be responsive to CFTR modulators? I'm not aware really that uh, these mutations are under, you know, I think you need collaboration with some of the, uh, you know, centers who are doing that, you know, by cells or by, uh, we can, you know, if there is good collaboration, uh, I think we can move in this. We have so many uh, mutations that we don't know what's their, you know, we know that they cause bad disease because we have patients who are pancreatic insufficient. They have high sweat chloride. They have pseudomonas early. They have low BFTs. But you know, their mutations is not, uh, you know, it's not well studied. Okay. The another question is, uh, um, can we spot on emphysema with multiple polyps in Saudi Arabia? So presumably what's meant that if we have a patient with emphysema and multiple nasal polyps. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this patient, I guess they will have, uh, they, need, they need to be tested for sweat chloride. Okay. You know, emphysema, meaning uh, there is some small area obstruction. And nasal polyps is also an indication. So if you have a patient like this, uh, they, need, they need to be studied for sweat chloride, among other things. But, you know, sweat chloride is needed in these cases. And a question to you uh, from Professor Saadi. Any suggestion of cost of children who receive the CFTR mutation corrector in Saudi Arabia? Uh, and, you know, I think we are talking about a million per year, something like this. In, this, in the States, $300,000 uh, per year. So it is, it is, it is expensive. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in, I just wanted to note that in Egypt we're having um, a new company